And you're all very welcome to the second in Lecture at Silent series. And we're very, very happy to welcome Lettuce Drake of Practice Architecture, a very young and innovative practice in London. And Lettuce Drake, Hello McGormley, and Henry Stringer have been working together now for up to three years. <coughs> And in the last year and a half, they have established themselves as practice architecture. It was originally intended to be called Make Do, or was possibly going to be called Make Do, um, which very much kind of describes the, the ethos and the practice that both Lettuce, Henry, and Paloma run. Um, some very, very stimulating projects, and um, I would say very expedient and very kind of economical in terms of means that they have used, very, very creative and innovative use of materials particularly. Um, we have such projects as a cafe in Peckham, very, very nice cafe, and another project in South Kilburn, which are designer studios. So um, in front of me here is the product of a single morning and afternoon that let us spend with the year two students, um, some very, very nice work, quite sophisticated in terms of the materials and their use, and I think everybody will enjoy using them. So let us see you've left a, a small present behind you after today. So um, without further ado, I'd like to hand over to you, let us. Thanks. <laughs> Um, 
space. So we had this ping pong of SketchUp from the current university and me in my office, we just work on this model and send it back and forth. And this is where we got to. And then one day, 300 second hand scaffolding boards just dumped at the bottom of this car park. And we had the task of getting them to the top, which took two days. Uh, and then we just had to begin. <laughs> um, I hadn't used many power tools before. I never used a skill saw or a piece of drill a couple of times. But um, we borrowed tools and people from when we get them and um, started building. Um, we also realised on support of the roof that the little model man that you get a sketch of was two metres tall. And so we got up there and standing everything. It was huge. A lot bigger than we intended it to be, but um, that turned out to be the best. There was a lot of fun. Um, uh, yeah, as we were on site, we came up against all kinds of problems, things that would fit. We just had to work through it. And what was really exciting is that all these people that turned up, a lot of whom had never built anything or had any experience in design, <coughs> were all contributing and trying to work out um, how we could. Uh, get through the problems that came up and things actually became real. Um, this was a chair making day. Me and Blubber had supposed to mock up chairs and we showed someone how we wanted it to be made. And as more people showed up, the knowledge of how to do that and how to use tools <coughs> spreads and spreads. And after a while, me and Blubber weren't saying anything, things were just starting to pop up around the building site, including chairs that. We had a design, uh, which, was, which was great. Um, uh, we learned how you can put up huge things if you've got enough people. Um, this, uh, this is the central row of columns that supports the, the props up. It, it does the final attention of the strap. So there's a little slap on that set. We have pushed up glass. Um, the roof we got made by a company that makes lorry suds. Um, and it was really exciting having some of the drawn in SketchUp just arrive and so it was packaged. And then we had to do a bit. Um, the, yeah, the roof raising day had a lot of boring bits where we had to stop and work out how to overcome this problem. We had three teams from the top, one below, and one on another level, we all shouting around to each other as we got the straps around the car park. Um, and then gradually got the tension going. Um, there was a lot of improvisation as well, as we realised that there were details that we hadn't thought about, like how the strap would be rubbing for three months against the concrete. So I had to find something. This was an office tile. Uh, and then similarly, like the strap goes through the top of the post, so we need to find a way of stopping the friction going down the strap too much. And we um, ended up wrapping uh, a tablecloth around some corrugated plastic um, and hammering that in. And that's what it eventually looked like. Um, yeah, it was really bizarre when something we'd lived up there basically for three weeks while we built this. Uh, and then hoping that suddenly there will be some other people there. Um, but yeah, it's been really successful. Um, maybe a bit too successful this year, but uh, yeah. This is the kitchen, man. That's the view out of London. Um, that summer, we hadn't met Henry yet, but this is what he was doing. He was building a hot tub, a wood powered hot tub on the roof of his house, and this, which was also our scaffolding boards, which is how we heard about him, which is a fellow coaster for the geometers. Um, but his main his material choice is steel, and um, his parents uh, run a shop furniture. Uh, making warehouses so it's all brought up around welders and you can make it. 
Um, so the next thing for us to do is the shop front, which is also a packet, and we slide some steel slash wood that is for three meters by three meters, and have, um, and through that, Henry taught us to weld, um, and so suddenly steel became something valuable for us that we actually imagined working with and work with. Um, we also had to do some smelting, so we need to make counterweights that could hold up three meters. <coughs> Um, by one and a half meter piece of window, uh, so we had to cast lead counterweights, um, which run on most bike chains. Don't have any photos of that, which is unfortunate for this. This was um, a, quite a different type of project. Um, in January, the Arctic Foundation working with my council approached us to suggest what this building could become. Um, they invited a few practices to pitch for what this building could be. It was an ex-housing office in South Dublin, which had been one of the most deprived areas in Britain. Um, it's this triangle of land that's mostly social housing. Um, and 10 years ago, it was given a budget of £50,000 by the government uh, to help with its rebellion. Most of that is going to new housing, but they had to spend the remainder of this money by March in desperately trying to find projects to put it into some which were our projects. Um, so it was a 10 grand budget to find a temporary use for this building, um, which was pretty depressing inside. It had a crazy plan where you'd go through one boardroom and end up in another room. You'd get totally lost inside of this thing. Um, and so rather than this being a uh, design build, it was a different way of thinking, which was what things be used for. And um, rather than doing a kind of jolly summer pop-up, we threw it more interesting to try and install something that could potentially keep going. Um, so the idea we came up with was to get young designers um, from most of them in Kilburn, and if not from the rest of London, offer them free studio space. And in exchange for that, they then take on the trainee from the South Kilburn from the age of 18 and 24, uh, and also run workshops in regular their practice was. Um, so we had to untangle this, uh, all these prefab walls to try and um, make it really a bit more. So we made a large communal space with studios on the side. Um, and yeah, we wanted to make something that would communicate with our children. Um, so we designed a change, changeable lettering system which is on the front. We wanted it to be quite slick. Um, compared to some of the other things we've done, so it will be taken seriously. Um, so we began and had three, no, four weeks to turn it around. Um, uh, this was the guy from the garage next door who helped us get the boxes, the light box, onto the roof. Uh, we dropped one of them, which is the smash one in the foreground. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's me and Henry trying to get it to square up because it wasn't working right. Um, yeah, we began to work with a lot of people. The local college is painting decorative and course helped us paint the interior of the building. Um, and the Architecture Foundation just put up the same set of books to help out with the money. We had about five to ten people a day just turning up to help us. Um, and that's that's what the light box is kind of looking like. Uh, it's a changeable left hand on the left hand side. Um, we decided to bring up the window frames with gold spray paint. And um, on the inside, we got rid of the carpets and laid a kind of parquet um, palm floor just for the shutter and the fly. Um, one of the big challenges was to make the quite oppressive suspended ceiling. Slightly less impressive. Um, so I ended up painting salad bowls, fluorescent orange, and then proceeded back with the light. 
this is the way meals are being dealt with. Um, but throughout the building process, we really have been involved with the Architecture Foundation and Grant in selecting um, applicants for these students to ensure we have a rich mix of people. So there's a hat maker, music producers, um, TV producers, photographer, furniture maker. Um, and they have weekly meetings every week to discuss how things are going. Um, and all that training has just been announced at this project. It's going to continue for another six months now. So. <coughs> and this is our most recent project. Um, while we were building the studios, a friend of a friend, who's a director, who's our age, um, approached us frustrated with the lack of spaces in London for young directors to put on a place without forking out lots of money. Um, <coughs> and in order to, and once you pay for a big space, but simply the plane, you don't have to make a play, the more in London and mainstream will also guarantee to be sales back again. Um, so he was on a mission to build a theatre where young theatre companies could put on plays for free. And he managed to persuade um, a developer to let you know, this warehouse in the bottom left. Um, and there needed to be a bar in the same space as the theatre in order to have some revenue for this theatre. So we had the immediate challenge of the city separating the theatre from the bar. Um, and so we had the idea of the great seats and the means of doing that. Um, and we got a lot of construction ideas from this amphitheatre, which we built shortly after France, um, which again is a sort of technique of France. It's all together, boards bolted together. There's no um, complex drawing anywhere. Um, and so we took the idea of these layered frames, and it's a rather messy sketch of the um, but the idea was that when you arrive in the square, you then arrive in the underbelly of this um, seating. And then it's where you see the plate and you get to the, the main space. Um, and we had two and a half weeks to deliver this. Uh, we've just finished building the cafe again. And we've just moved our sleeping bags from the room to the warehouse. Um, and the acoustic separation, we had to learn about acoustics and, and forms of scratch we hadn't done before, like stud balling, um, past the wall. Um, so, this is the inside of the theatre. This is the underbelly. And this is where we got to in two and a half weeks, just. We had the back sides in pink fire department plastic. Um, initially we left the legs unclad uh, and then just went for it and were really relieved to produce material for them. Or no, we used scaffolding boards, but I think we were quite excited by having a really different um, feel and texture rather than the plastic other than the um, This isn't by us. Um, but I thought I'd talk about how these kind of projects are becoming more common um, in London and elsewhere. Um, these guys were at the university with us and helped us build the cafe in the first year. And, um, and what's interesting about them is that they find spaces that aren't being used and then find the other guys and pitch an idea and they run the whole project themselves for its lifespan. So this is a cinema. The petrol station in the parking lot um, called the Cinerolium. And they use silver insulation lining to make these curtains, which they sewed for about two weeks with um, domestic sewing machines. Uh, and the idea of it is that this curtain closes the cinema, which looks like this, um, but this curtain can raise. So after the 
show is finished. They're all facing the main road in London. All the curtains are lifted up and so I'm just looking at it. There is these streets, those streets looking back at them. This was the next project they did, which was in Hackenwick, but near our theatre. Um, it's an other belly of a flyover. Uh, I think it was, yeah, it's a massive nice project that was out on this side of London. Um, and this is what they did this summer, using the wooden bricks. Um, they kind of deal with the Olympics, which is right next door, uh, together with their scrap woods, which they then chopped up into bricks and um, thread them together using the ropes. Um, this is, exists, the next project that people did the ladder that I told you about, and I'm showing this because it's kind of showing where this kind of uh, temporary construction can go. There's a project called Meanwhile that's just going up on in London because it's been identified that huge sites owned by developers aren't likely to be used for five to ten years. Um, and it's just sitting there empty. So this year, um, a project's been run to invite them to pitch projects to use these spaces in that meantime. Um, and this is a vast project that's going to happen, which is, which is a market square um, and garden and a bunch of space. Um, and it's now not just them, they're working with all kinds of organisations around London to program this space. Um, and it's, it's getting a lot of people thinking about how many spaces we're into in that London. Um, councils and local spaces are waiting to sell developers. Uh, and they'll be seen in two to five to ten years. Um, and so, with us, and what we're doing next, me and Blum are about to go back to do our full year at London next. Um, but I've always been in the studio where you can do your own projects. And Hannah Barry, who commissioned us to do a cafe, uh, has asked us to go to the library. Um, and at the moment, we are trying to work out how permanent that library can be. Um, that we're in negotiations with the council, but it seems like this five to ten year window is something that we might be allowed to work with. So we have grand visions and something like this, but probably not as permanent. But um, that's one of my favourite buildings, which is the Centre in um, Star Palo by Lena Um but uh, her opinions of South and South Island Mastermind is um, a place that provides library exhibition space, workshops, uh, ceramics workshops, sports facilities. Um, and this was built about 30 or 40 years ago, but it's still really alive. Um, and so we'd, we'd like to build a library, but we're thinking about combining it with other facilities, perhaps artist studios. It's been an art and design library. Um, and I think we'd like to bring in both. We'd like to use the opportunity to learn how to build real buildings, possibly working with a contractor on an educational basis. Um, but as we did in the South Building, we're really interested in being involved in developing the infrastructure of the library itself uh, and involved in organizations who have the expertise in that area. Um, Um, the gallery built 
about uh, the inviting those people to open it that sculpture show on the first night. There were 2,000 people, um, which was quite terrifying because we were still kind of tidying up the building site. Um, within that first year, all of the artists from the exhibition, the local artists that we got to know from building it, and the people in the first year were generally people from around Peckham. It was still definitely one demographic in Peckham, uh, um, mainly the only artists from the local artists. Um, but the next year, it got more press than people started coming from the city, and this year uh, it's mainly young professionals from the rest of London. And it's, um, we've seen it pop up in council documents approaching developers to invest in Peckham by saying, look, Peckham's new now, it's not crimes and crime. And that aspect of it is something that we're uncomfortable with, was um, leading to the swift gentrification, not leading to it, but contributing to Uh, and that's something we to think about for the library, which is also going to be the um, Yeah, it's really striking. It's this car park on the right lane, which is the main spine of Central Pecan. And it's got the densest West African population in Europe. Uh, and it's an incredible high rate. Most people from Nigeria, but you could be in Lagos. Um, it's really vibrant. You have to go up a lift to the roof of this car park and everyone's right in the middle class. Um, um, and it's a really difficult thing to address, but that seems to have been reinforced for each year. Um, so I think that's what I meant by it. a bit too successful. But you need to change from what you originally Yeah.
maths. <laughs> we stay up. Um, usually if you've got a lot of people projects, we end up just sleeping there. Um, but it's also quite amazing to sleep when you just pop up, uh, wake up, and you have a lot of burden. Um, we sat Kilburn. It was the opposite end of London. And moving up to be there every day just became too, too much. Um, and also, once we were sleeping there, it was quite fun feeling involved. Just ask a question. Um, I'm just wondering to what degree uh, these extracurricular projects are um, encouraged and facilitated by your respective uh, institutions, your colleges, and that.
graduate. Um, and then gradually, I, could, I managed to leave my job on part time and then left into all the projects this year with my family full time. And I've been very lucky to be able to survive off the profits from the cafe. Um, but with London Met, where we're about to go, they run a special unit called the Free Unit, uh, where you can um, approach them with projects that you're working on or would like to explore and you're supported to do that for a year. Um, and it might happen, it might not, but um, you basically have all the facilities of the university and expertise of the university to help you with that. Um, and your original endeavours, they were entirely your own impetus, so? Well, with the cafe we were approached by Hannah, um, she asked us to do the cafe. And we just assumed that we were going to build it, um, and did. <laughs> um, and then it was only after that, in the next project, which, which we can have this, that the, um, Hannah said we needed a name, and she needed to be able to talk about us. <laughs> um, and so we just only started four months later on. Um, but usually we're, we've worked on the basis where we're approached by people and how we respond. The other group that talked about who did the cinema, they totally generate their own projects and find the spaces. So that folly they did, which was also the cinema, they, there are 13 of them and they man the bar and the cinema throughout the whole summer. And they've all got full time, most of them have full time jobs and just kind of converted of how they run these things. So was it like on the job, this doesn't sound right? Or oh right, um, we worked, we were really lucky because a guy who emailed me a year before saying, I'm an architect, but I've worked with a data consultant, so I'm really bored. If you're doing anything, please, um, anything that resembles a bad data, contact me, um, which we did. And he was amazing, he knew all the annual and building regulations of the Thank you. 
And I didn't see the RTV and then there's an end gap. Then there was a roof insulation and then we passed the wood. I think we'd like to be two hard surfaces, there's a soft one and an end gap. It was meant to be that type, but we definitely didn't achieve that. You've got, you've got to be quiet in the bar. How do you convince people to give over their buildings to be reused, even temporarily? Or do you do that? Are you involved in that side of we, things? We have been, yeah, um, we've been really lucky. We've just been approached, or whoever's instigating the project has taken on that role. But um, there's one English member of exists who's uh, kind of studying these spaces can be freed up and given to use. Um, often developers are paranoid about people squatting and holding onto that land once they've got it. Um, and the lighter was done through working with quite a delighted developer who actually enjoyed these projects. Um, but she's trying to think of ways in which projects like this, which actually develop, which actually great for some developers, it gives them a facade of caring about people. <laughs> um, so, uh, and actually help them in establishing links with the people in that area. Um, she's trying to develop ways in which um, these projects could start um, on many more spaces but then be absorbed into it and develop this, then take place there. Um, but there's something in England called Section 106 where any large development has an obligation to spend 10% of the build budget on things that are beneficial for the community infrastructure. Um, and so she's trying to get in there and basically to free up that Section 106 for these kind of projects to take place. Um, which I think I think that's So who determines the budget then? Is that, a, is that agreed between, say, the person who approaches the developer or how is that arranged? Um, so it's pretty limited, 10,000 euro or pounds is... Yeah. It's, it's great what you've achieved with so little. You know, it's, it's um, a very difficult challenge. Yeah, with Frank's, whenever we worked with Hannah, we worked with her, she doesn't set us the budget. We just kind of trust that we'll keep it as well as we can. And so we then come up with an idea and then work out roughly how much it will cost and then she decides whether she can raise the money or whether it's worth raising that money for. So the cafe, our budget was five pounds. Um, but then you have to remember that this is all done with our labour costs yeah. and insurance. <laughs> um, uh, and um, it was really interesting to see it bringing labor costs. We were really excited to be able to pay the building to build it with us this year, but the budget probably jumped by five times doing that. Uh, but yeah, we, we've worked on this, and so the theatre that was seven grand, um, and the Arts Council gave a grant for that, but with the, with the cinema, people did the cinema, they operate through approaching companies saying they're doing a really great thing to give us free stuff. And they start to generate their designs around the project, around the materials that they come across. Um, so that person was originally a different material, and then they found this company that would give them <coughs> loads of whatever that was, and um, that affected the design. Um, but they, they work on pretty much the real budget. <laughs> Your projects, are they related to sustainability? Or? Um, they often involve reclaimed materials, which will be discussed in the same way. They mean they're cheap and they're all in the But um, I'll be reluctant to say that that's not the right thing to force behind our designs. Um, people are quite keen to label us as school architects. We read in one article about the 
been to recently, but it was in made entirely of the roof legs and 100% biodegradable materials. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, that's not, uh, it's something that we like to bring into our work, but it's an initial or state of the work. Thank you very much.